Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It is Sunday morning and we've got another nippy one today. I mean, it doesn't feel as cold as yesterday, but the ponds are frozen over and everything is covered in that beautiful frosty layer you get after a really cold night. So we really must get in the poly house and we'll have a little look and see how low that dropped, given that last night it probably got to minus two out here. Now, because it's a Sunday, no fire down here today, so we're gonna to have to do lots of moving around to keep ourselves warm. So that's a good thing because we need to go and get a load of bark chip and finish off some of these paths. So as you know, I've got two plots. One side is grass pathed, the other side is bark chipped, and we're almost there. So I would like to try and get that done before Christmas at least. So that should keep us warm for a little bit. And then we've also got the compost heap. So we've got four compost heaps in total here. One is brand new. So I am gonna leave that for another year or so just to sit down and that will break down on its own for the first year. The other three, they need a real good turnover. So we will go and do that a little bit later and I'll give you lots of tips and just some reasonings as to why we give it a turn and how to get the best compost. I've also got a new tub of chicken manure pellets, so we'll go and give those a sprinkle over the pineberry beds and the strawberry beds. And then finally, we've got the fruit bushes. So I've got two lots of fruit bushes. One is in a corner, and then one is down in my fruit cage. And it seems as though the ones in the fruit cage have lost all of their leaves, and they might be ready to have their winter prune. So we'll go in there, have a good look, and see if we can get those pruned down today. And I'll give you some more tips. Yesterday we done the tree, so it'd be a good idea if we could get some fruit bushes done today. As always, there'll probably be some other little bits and bobs that come along the way. The birds seem to be really singing their hearts out this morning. The sun is trying to peek through the clouds, so it might be we get some little nature shots as well, which is always nice. Now, as always, I'm going to go and make myself a nice cup of coffee, warm myself up for a little bit, and then we can go down and start on the bark chip. So we've nearly done the wood chip. As you can see, this side is completely wood chip, whereas my other side, we've got the grass paths. So we want to try and finish off over here. This is going to be the asparagus bed, and we've got the path in there that I just need to finish off. All that grass is starting to grow along here. That is another path, so I do want to get some wood chip along there. Now I am thinking I'm just going to put that on top, and anything that grows through I can then weed. Then finally, we have got this big bed here, which has got one, two, three and a half paths in there. So we'll get those done. And then we've got the little box bed. So I'll just want to finish off along this path here. And then we've got the pond and the pear tree over there. So we'll probably just dump a load in there as well. But I have got quite a bit of grass. But like I say, I think I'm just going to put it over the top. And then anything that grows through should be quite easy to remove anyway. God, I feel like I've hit a gold mine. Just look at the chunkiness on that. That is a lot better than a lot of the wood chip that I've been putting down on these paths. So these paths should last a lot longer than the rest. So yeah, I'm really chuffed with this material.
there we go guys we can see all the different colored barks now so i have managed to do quite a lot of this this was the absolutely beautiful stuff that i found at the beginning the golden bark but there wasn't huge amounts of that but i have just given every path a really good thick layer of that mulch well, fingers crossed this is going to last us until this time next year if not spring i can always do a little top up but yeah it is looking a lot neater and tidier on this side now So here is one of my compost heaps down on the plot. I've actually got four heaps in total and they're all heaps rather than the plastic compost bins that you can get. Now the Dalek type bins are great for smaller spaces or smaller gardens but I just have too much debris to compost every year. If you do have one of the plastic ones do make sure that you are keeping it moist because rainfall isn't going to get in there if you leave the lid on. When I used to use these over the summer months I used to leave the lid off because it would be warm enough and it would allow some of that rainfall to get inside. The great thing about them is that they're normally black, which does attract the heat, and in the winter that is what you need because they're not going to be big enough to produce that heat on their own. However, I don't have that problem because these heaps are quite large and they should be able to keep that heat up all on their own. Now all of that heat is produced from the energy from the microorganisms, the bacteria, the fungi and all the other little insects that are in there. Now these guys are breaking down all of that material but what happens in the winter is it starts to slow down due to the cold weather. Now you can buy a compost thermometer or just to get a standard thermometer but it is going to have to be quite long and if you insert that in that should be around 50 or 60 degrees. This is the ideal temperature but if it's in winter don't worry too much if it is a little bit less. If you have got a smaller compost heap or one of the plastic bins, I wouldn't advise turning it in the colder months because you want it to keep that heat locked in there. However, I'm going to give these a good old turn because they should be able to regenerate that heat pretty quickly as I move the material around. So you should really keep on top of your turning throughout the year, but I've been a little bit lazy, which is why I want to give them a real good turn today. Now these big heaps, I'd recommend leaving them for two to three years if you're not going to bother turning them because they will compost down all on their own because they will generate enough heat. Anything larger than a metre square is perfect. Now this has sat here for a good two years and I haven't turned it at all, so I'm hoping that we're going to have some beautiful fresh compost down at the bottom. Now I definitely want to mulch this on the asparagus bed, but I've got plenty of beds that are empty, so we'll see what we can top up with this beautiful nutrient-rich compost. So I've started off by removing all the woody, unbroken down material that sat on top, and I've just moved that further up the pile. Now by setting that aside, we're going to be able to get right under this compost heap and start getting the actual broken down compost, which will be right at the bottom. So let's move all of this stuff on top and see what we can get down at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see but this soil is absolutely teeming with life we've got loads of little wood lice we've got the adults but also loads of babies in here and we've also got the composting worms now these are different to your normal earthworms they're a lot smaller and almost a bright pinky red we've also got a devil's coach horse which is one of these long black bugs and i'm pretty sure there's some other little insects in there as well so there'll be loads of microorganisms and tiny bugs that we can't see in there nematodes fungi all sorts but yeah it's great to see that it's absolutely teeming with life and just shows that this soil is absolutely brilliant for the garden and not only is it full of lots of life but this is going to be full of loads of nutrients and just look how crumbly that texture is so this is perfect for mulching your beds and getting some nutrients down into your soil
I managed to get three wheelbarrows out of here, which was quite a lot, but then the whole thing's collapsed in on me. So what I'm going to do is some of this compost, I'm just going to shovel on top of it, just so that there's a good old mixture and all of those organisms which are in the actual compost down at the bottom will now be put on top and they can start eating away at some of the newer material which hasn't yet broken down. But there we go, we've put it all away now. So what I can do is I can start adding material back on top of this and then hopefully this time next year, everything that's in there now will have broken down properly and I'll have three or four more barrow loads full of fresh compost. Now I've still got quite a few leaves on these berries down here so we're going to leave these well alone but we will take a look at the berries over in the fruit cage because they're near enough naked. So here are my red currants and as you can see all the leaves are off so they will now be in their dormant stage which happens in the winter time so now is a perfect time to give them a prune. So let's get in here and give these guys a bit of a haircut. The red currants are similar to gooseberries in that they're going to flower and produce their fruit on older stems, whereas a black currant will produce their fruit on new growth. Now, similar to the fruit tree, we want to go for that goblet shape. So anything that's growing right in the center of this plant, we're going to want to get rid of. You want as much airflow going through this plant to avoid any diseases in the summer when this is full of leaf and full of your berries. Now I did have a problem with the current blister aphid last year, but it didn't seem to have a problem with the actual crop itself. So you want to be looking for your 3Ds, same as yesterday, dead disease and dying wood. But to be fair, this plant is quite healthy. Other than the leaf problem that we had with the aphids, I can't find any of the 3Ds on this plant. Because of that, we're going to skip that step. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the growth which is growing in the middle of the plant and it's going to stop some of that air from circulating. You can see these all down at the bottom of the plant and it's all new growth. So we want to get rid of that. And then whilst we're getting rid of all that new growth, I am just going to reduce the height a little bit on these plants. If you've got a really old plant, you can really start giving it a good old hack and remove all of those old dead branches that you can find on these current bushes. They are really tough plants. You'll find these on a lot of allotments and they can go without water and all sorts. So don't worry too much if you do want to give them a real good old hack back. And remember the same as yesterday, where you make your cuts is important. So you want to be cutting just above a bud that is on the outside of the plant so that you don't get any growth into the goblet shape itself. You want the growth to be moving away from the center of the plant. Let me take you in for a closer look. So here we have got one of the main stems here coming up from the plant and all of these little branches are going to carry lots of new leaves and this is going to have all of your berries on next year. The idea is, is you want all the air to be able to pass through here so that you don't get any horrible fungal diseases later in the year. Now this is why it's important where you make your cut. So you'll have to excuse the hands because I've been digging around in the compost. So on the left hand side, this big thick one, this is the main branch. And off this, you'll find all of these smaller little branches which are coming off and that's where all of your berries and all your leaves are going to be next year. So if we take a look at these two thinner branches, you can see these tiny little nodules along the side and these are all the buds. And this is where the flowers and all the leaves are going to pop out in spring. Now because we want the air to be able to flow through these branches really nicely, then what we want to do is we want to cut above one of these buds, but it needs to be pointing on the outside. So out of these buds here, this, pro this one at the top is probably the best one. So I'd probably make my cut about a centimetre or two just above that bud. That means that all of the growth is going to come out away from the main plant, so out towards the right hand side. If I was to cut just above this one, we're going to have a branch start going towards that main stem and in this area where we want the air to be able to flow through. So take a pair of secateurs and just cut above any buds which are on the outside so that all the growth can start to come out. And then hopefully with your cuttings you're going to have quite a few long ones and what we can do with these is we can sink these into some compost and they should start to root. These are what we called hardwood cuttings. So I'm going to find a little bit of compost, stick these in the poly house and fingers crossed these will start to root.
Now you might be able to tell the difference. So we've got these two here and these are really hard wood. So they're a lot darker, whereas these are a lot lighter wood. So I'd probably use these ones as these are likely to score in the ground better than these much more woody, which is probably a lot older wood than these new shoots. So down here, I've just got some multi-purpose compost. Now it has been in a bag outside and it's near enough frozen, which is why I'm gonna stick these into the poly house. It has been getting up to about 20 degrees in there. So fingers crossed, we'll get some sunny days and these can warm up. As that soil starts to warm up, it should tell the plants to start creating some roots and fingers crossed, we'll have some new red currant plants for next year. You want your cuttings to be about 8 inches long at the shortest and don't forget you want to cut the top off as well. So cut just above one of the buds there and you want to do this at a slight angle just to allow some of that water to drip off. I'd say a 45 degree angle and that will stop it from rotting away or any disease getting in there by making it a little bit weak. So I do get asked, why do you put them at the corners of the pots or next to the sides of the pots? And it's to help with the root development. So as the roots start to form and it hits the plastic side, it starts to break into lots of little roots. So rather than getting just one main tap root, you start to create an actual root ball, which is much more beneficial for the plant and is going to allow it to take up much more nutrients and water. I managed to get a new bucket of the chicken manure pellets so we're going to sprinkle these on the pine berries and the strawberries last weekend we did stick these on the garlic the shallots and the onions because it is full of nitrogen so i'm going to sprinkle these on the pine berries and the strawberries as this is going to help with the root growth over winter now, they don't do much on top of the soil with the greenery but they will be putting on lots of growth underneath that soil in their root system Down here in the wild corner, just look, we've got this little tiny marigold, which doesn't realise that it's been frosty the last few nights and it seems to have survived, so we'll see whether he opens up anymore. I didn't manage to turn these two heaps today, but it's all right because next weekend is meant to be quite cold, so this job does keep me warm. But I must be careful on the left-hand side because there was a wasp nest in there and I want to be careful in case the queen wasp is hibernating in here over the winter time. So that is all we've got time for today, folks. I've made a little friend today. The robin hasn't left my side all day. It's been after those worms and I've even been feeding it some suet pellets. So hopefully soon I'll be able to feed it from my hand. That's always been a dream and I always get so close every year. So it's been quite a productive weekend. Yesterday we pruned the pear tree, which was a job that I really wanted to get done because now is a great time to be doing that. The apples we're going to save for another month or so because they've still got plenty of leaves on them. Then today we have pruned some of the fruit bushes, we've still got the gooseberries to go, we've got the raspberry canes and also the grapes, so keep your eyes out for that video. We've managed to turn one of the compost heaps today, we've still got two more to do so that will keep me busy over the next couple of weeks. And we've also done quite a bit more wood chip today, so fingers crossed it won't be too long before we've done both plots with the wood chip. Can you hear that? Ice cream van. November. It's quite cold, I don't think I fancy an ice cream but... There might be some people. So I think here in the UK we are due a cold snap. So sort of minus two, minus three we're predicted here. I know some of you sort of based in Canada, North America, you're used to much colder temperatures. But for us down in the south of the UK, that is ruddy cold. I think we're even predicted some snow and November is quite early to be getting snowfall but if we do I've got to get down here on the plot. I've got Thursday Friday off and also the following Monday so fingers crossed if we do get some snow I'm heading straight down here. 
A little fire in the snow with a nice hot cup of coffee or even a hot chocolate sounds absolutely perfect. I probably won't get much work done, but it'll just be a point of chilling, relaxing and maybe watching the birds. So fingers crossed we won't get any rain next week because as long as we don't get rain, I am down here on the plot. So I hope you've all had a lovely week wherever you are in the world and I hope you have an even better week next week. But I'll be back down here hopefully next weekend for another adventure down here on the plot. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all of that good stuff and I'll see you all down here very soon. So take care guys. See you later. Bye bye.